Hi and welcome to John's Maths Book. In this video, we'll be exploring another key concept in mathematics. If you find this tutorial helpful, then please show your support by subscribing, liking and leaving a comment. Your positive engagement helps me create more content and allows me to bring you more valuable maths lessons. Without further ado, let's go over to the whiteboard. In this exercise, we have three circles, labelled here as circle 1, 2 and 3, and the circles intersect. The region of intersection is shown in red. We are tasked with finding the area of the red region of intersection using double integrals and polar coordinates. The equation of each of the circles is shown in Cartesian coordinates. Circle 1 has a radius of 2 and is centered at the origin. Circle 2 has a radius of 2 and is centered at x equals 2 and y equals 0 and cuts the x-axis at x equals 4. Circle 3 has a radius of 2 and is centered at x equals 0 and y equals 2 and cuts the y-axis at y equals 4. The first step in finding the area is to convert the equations of each circle from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. To do this, we'll substitute our cos theta for x and our sine theta for y. So for circle 1, where x squared plus y squared is equal to 4, if we make this substitution for x and y, we have r squared into the bracket of cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 4. And using the trig identity where cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1, we have r squared equals 4. And taking the positive square root of each side of the equation, we're left with r equals 2. For circle 2, we have the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 4x. And making the substitution for x and y, we have r squared into the bracket of cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 4r cos theta. Using the trig identity where cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1, we have r squared is equal to 4r cos theta. And dividing each side of the equation by r, we're left with r equals 4 cos theta. For circle 3, we have the equation x squared plus y squared equals 4y. And making the substitution for x and y, we have r squared into the bracket of cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 4r sine theta. Using the trig identity where cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, we're left with r squared equals 4r sine theta. Dividing both sides of the equation by r, we get r equals 4 sine theta. Now that we've found the radial distance r of each of the circles, let's look at the behavior of r as we use it to compute the region shown in red. As r rotates in a counterclockwise direction from theta equals 0 to theta equals pi by 2, where theta is the angle r makes with the x-axis, the radial distance from the origin is first determined by circle 3. When circle 3 intersects with circle 1 at some angle of theta, the radial distance from the origin is determined by circle 1 until it intersects with circle 2 at some angle of theta. At this point, and until theta equals pi by 2, circle 2 is used to determine the radial distance r. At theta equals pi by 2, the area is complete. As you can see, we have three sectors to consider between theta equals 0 and theta equals pi by 2. The first sector begins at theta equals 0 and completes at an unknown angle of theta where circle 3 meets circle 1. The polar equations of circle 1 and 3 are shown. We can equate the two polar equations to find the value of theta at the intersection point of circle 3 and circle 1. So when we do this, we get 4 sine theta is equal to 2 and sine theta is equal to a half. Therefore, theta is equal to pi by 6 radians. The second sector we now know begins at theta equals pi by 6 and completes at an unknown angle of theta 
where circle 1 intersects with circle 2. The polar equations of circle 1 and circle 2 are shown. Equating the two equations gives 4 cos theta equals 2. So cos theta is equal to a half. And therefore, theta is equal to pi by 3 radians. We are now in a position to start defining the limits of integration as r rotates about theta, which in this case will be the outer integral. In this case, the region, as we saw, is split into three distinct sectors, each represented by a double integral. In the first sector, theta started at 0 and continued to where theta equals pi by 6 radians. These form the limits of integration of the outer integral of our first double integral. We then saw that the second sector began where theta equals pi by 6 radians and continued to where theta equals pi by 3 radians. These forming the limits of integration of the outer integral of our second double integral. Finally, we saw that the third sector began where theta equaled pi by 3 radians and continued to where theta equals pi by 2 radians. These forming the limits of integration of the outer integral of our third double integral. Now let's look at what happens when we sum infinitesimally small pieces of area along the radial distance or in the r direction. This will help us define the inner integrals. When we integrate in the r direction or along the radial distance, this will represent the inner of the three integrals. This diagram represents a sector of the region capital R. The angle it makes is infinitesimally small and is defined by d theta. Within the sector, we have infinitesimally small pieces of area denoted by dA. The size of each area is denoted by the length multiplied by the width. So in this case, dR is the length and R d theta the width. So dA is equal to R dR d theta. In the first sector of area, when we sum or integrate along the radial distance r, we begin at the origin and travel along the perimeter of circle 3 until circle 3 intersects with circle 1. So we begin at r equals 0 and end at r equals 4 sine theta. In the second sector of area, when we sum or integrate along the radial distance r, we begin at the origin and travel along the perimeter of circle 1 until circle 1 intersects with circle 2. So we begin at r equals 0 and end at r equals 2. And finally, in the third sector of area, when we sum or integrate along the radial distance r, we begin at the origin again and travel along the perimeter of circle 2. So we begin at r equals 0 and end at r equals 4 cos theta. Now we can add the limit of integration of our three sectors when we integrate or sum along the radial distance r. In the first sector, we saw that our lower limit was at r equals 0, and our upper limit was where r equals 4 sine theta. In the second sector, we saw that our lower limit was at r equals 0, and our upper limit was where r equals 2. And finally, in the third sector, we saw that our lower limit was at r equals 0, and our upper limit was at r equals 4 cos theta. And in each of the integrals, we are summing infinitesimally small pieces of area, dA, which translates to r dr d theta. We can now begin to evaluate the inner integrals. The first of these is the integral from r equals 0 to r equals 4 sine theta, r dr. Using the power rule, the antiderivative of this is r squared divided by 2, which needs to be evaluated between 0 and 4 sine theta. Plugging in these values for r gives 8 sine squared theta. The second of the inner integrals requires us to integrate from r equals 0 to r equals 2 r dr. Using the power rule, the antiderivative of this is r squared divided by 2, which needs to be evaluated between 0 and 2. Plugging in these values for r, we get a value of 2. And the third of the inner integrals requires us to integrate from r equals 0 to r equals 4 cos theta, r dr. And using the power rule, its antiderivative is r squared divided by 2, 
which needs to be evaluated between 0 and 4 cos theta. And plugging in these values for r gives us an answer of 8 cos squared theta. That completes the inner integrals. We can now begin work on the outer integrals. The first of these is the integral from theta equals 0 to theta equals pi by 6, 8 sine squared theta d theta. The antiderivative of this is 8 into the bracket of theta divided by 2 minus sine 2 theta divided by 4. And this needs to be evaluated between 0 and pi by 6. Check out this video I made for a step-by-step -step solution to the integral of sine squared theta d theta. And plugging in these values for theta gives 2 pi divided by 3 minus the square root of 3. For the second of the outer integrals, we need to integrate between theta equals pi by 6 and theta equals pi by 3 to d theta. Using the power rule, the antiderivative of this is 2 theta, and we need to evaluate this between pi by 6 and pi by 3. And plugging in these values for theta gives us pi by 3. And the last of the outer integrals requires us to integrate between theta equals pi by 3 and theta equals pi by 2, 8 cos squared theta d theta. And the antiderivative of this is 8 into the bracket of theta divided by 2 plus sine 2 theta divided by 4, which needs to be evaluated between pi by 2 and pi by 3. Check out this video I made for a step-by-step -step solution to the integral of cos squared theta d theta. And plugging in these values for theta gives us 2 pi by 3 minus the square root of 3. That completes the integrals, and that's all that remains is to sum the results. So we have 2 pi by 3 minus root 3 plus pi by 3 plus 2 pi by 3 minus root 3 which gives a final answer of 5 pi by 3 minus 2 multiplied by the square root of 3.